today. I'm so excited. An all new chapter of our Let's Get Make Book Club. It's our 10th one. Have a seat. So here's the deal. Settle on in, settle on in, because guess what? All hour long, we have booked the hottest people behind the page turners that are topping the charts, the must reads on the list. See, we do the work, so you don't have to. That's what we do around here. Okay. I, I've been in a book state of mind because I am so grateful. Thank you for supporting my very first cookbook, A Confident Cook, co-written with my dear friend, James Beard Award winning producer, culinary producer, Liz Silent. So coming up, oh, I should tell you, this Friday, we will be at Williams-Sonoma in Atlanta. Next week, we're gonna hit it up in LA at the Food Bowl. At the end of the month, we're gonna be at the Food and Wine Classic in Charleston. I am doing a lot of eating and I gotta get out of these tight clothes. All right. Go to TamronHallShow.com for all the details. The book is already a bestseller on Amazon, so thank you, thank you. But here is the question. Are y'all ready? Let's get lit. So, our first guest is a chart-topping, multi-platinum recording artist and actress who first shot to fame at the very young age of 13 when her breakout smash hit, Leave Get Out, made her the youngest ever solo artist to have a debut number one single in the United States. In the mid-2000s, JoJo was a global superstar, millions of fans, and hugely popular songs like Too Little Too Late. But JoJo seemingly vanished after a legal battle with her record label left her silent and unable to release new music for almost a decade. Well, since breaking free in 2014, JoJo has taken control, releasing new music on her own record label. That's a strong woman. JoJo came to the show virtually in 2020. We spoke candidly about her self-discovery that's been fueling this new music. And now JoJo is sharing the full story of her life, the journey from a child star to a woman controlling her own destiny. Her new memoir is called Over the Influence in a daytime exclusive. Tam fan, please welcome JoJo! I am so excited because you've joined the show virtually now twice. This yes. is the first time in person. It's appropriate you have this beautiful sparkly um, skirt on because the last time you were on, you were singing Christmas music with PJ Morton. Uh, yes. We um, and it's been such a journey. Now you are part of the Grammy winning song with PJ. Say so. Uh, say so. Uh, look at you. Oh, baby. Look Hello. at you. Looking good. Showing my legs. Um, I saw on Instagram, you and PJ posted finding out that Say So made Barack Obama's 2024 summer playlist. <laughs> Look at that was so exciting. Look at you. It was so unexpected because- So they don't tell you ahead of time, like, hey, the president, the former president is releasing his list and you're on it. No, people just started texting and calling me and they're like, look at you. <laughs> I'm like, what list? And then I was, it was just so exciting. So I was like, PJ, I think we should use that sound where it's like, we did it, Joe. <laughs> so we made a little, made a little TikTok. <laughs> I love that because you know, as I said, so much of your journey um, really is about the now and this resilient story. So I'm curious when you decide to go back in the memoir to take us to the beginning, um, from your relationship with your mom, all of that. How challenging was it? Because you are very much in the now, but you gotta gotta unpack some of that hard stuff in a memoir. Yes, I. So this year is the 20th anniversary of my first album coming out. And at 33, to be able to say that I've had a 20 year career at 33 is just a, a lot of, I mean, that's really rare and weird. Yeah. So I wanted to start to make sense of like how I got to this place and the things that I've been through. And hopefully by reading my story and the things that I lay bare that 
some younger people won't have to go through the things that, you know, the banging my head against the wall a thousand times until I learn type of, type of stuff. So it was, it was good for me. It but made for sense. you, I mean, listen, as a child star, and that's what you were, um, it's a very unique perspective. Most people aren't 13 year old breadwinners in their family. Most people aren't 13 year olds exposed to the brutality of the entertainment world. Right. Um, you talk about Britney Spears uh, in the book a little bit because your mom didn't want you on a song. Okay, so this, this picture is when I met Britney Spears. I think I was uh, eight or nine years old in, um, in Massachusetts, which is where we're from. And she, Britney Spears was gonna start a production company and her lawyer sent us the contract. They you know, wanted to sign me and my mom was like, no, you're too young. And I was like, you hate me. You're trying to ruin my life. This is, this is, the, this is the moment, Because you, you write in the book, I knew deep down I wanted to be a superstar. Yes. That's, that's really... How do you know that when you're this tiny? You can't oh. even stand next to the table. What do you oh. think it was um, as that nine-year-old who knew they wanted to be a superstar? Well, I mean, I, I watched a lot of VH1 and MTV, and I, you know, I... I idolized these these divas up there and I wanted to sound like them and be like them and I think I wanted more for myself and my mom than what we had and I felt like maybe this could this thing that I have could be this ticket to a life that's different than what we have oh I'm gonna get I'm gonna coming cry. up <laughs> coming up you hit on a big point of the book you wanted something more than what you and your mom had coming up the journey Jojo experience from that child to gaining control of her own career and her Broadway debut. It's our Let's Get Lit. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. It's our Let's Get Lit book series. Still with us, singer, songwriter, actress JoJo, who at age 13 became the youngest ever solo artist to have a debut number one single in the United States with her smash hit, Leave, Get Out. And now she's telling her story in a raw new memoir, Over the Influence, the title. Take mm -hmm. me back because I write books and mm -hmm. picking a title is very deliberate. Yes. And you are sending a message. Right. When the person walks by that cover. Yes. You know, it took me until the very end of writing the book. I didn't set into the writing process being like, this is what it is, but yeah. it revealed itself to me because I realized how much of my life I had spent under the influence of not only, uh, you know, a, a music industry, that's kind of a secondary story yeah. here, but of addiction, of, yeah. of a spirit of addiction and depression yeah. and of things, uh, of living for other people's opinions of what I should value and what I, how I should live my life. And by flipping it and saying over the influence, it's saying, that was that season yeah. of my life. We're in a different chapter now, and I'm yeah. writing a new narrative yeah. by saying I, I no longer subscribe to those same things. I know. When you were on our show virtually in 2020, you talked openly about your parents and their struggle with addiction. In the memoir, you say um, some of your earliest memories were at Alcoholics Anonymous meetings with your mom. You wrote, if it sounds a little weird that I was listening to the darkest confessions of addicted adults at such a young age, I'd have to agree, kids are sponges, and I can only imagine exactly what I heard and saw, but it felt normal back then. Yeah, it felt normal. I mean, look, I applaud everyone who is um, seeking sobriety and those who are sober. Like, it takes so much courage. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So I, I really think it's amazing, and my, my mom is doing so great. I'm so grateful for that. My dad, unfortunately, lost his struggle with addiction, and. So I grew up in and out of that program and I, uh, seeing my parents in it, sitting there with them and stuff. And I think that like, it definitely influenced the way that I am in my life because I'm used to seeing people lay it all bare. Right. Your mom uh, has read the book. My mom has read the book, yes. And is supportive. I got her blessing. Um, she, look, when, when you go to share your story, I mean, no one lives in a, in a vacuum or in a yeah. bubble. So I wanted to make sure that as I shared my story, it's also our story. Mm. So I really was as, um, as thoughtful and delicate as I could be while telling the truth. Right, because you're telling how it affected her, me. Right, how it affected you. I love that. Because, um, yeah, there's no, um, nobody's perfect. I'm certainly not, but I love my mom and I'm proud of her. And you, and you, and so much of this journey, as you said uh, earlier in our conversation, was that you wanted to get you and your mom out of the circumstances that you were in. Um, and 
this fame was a part of that. And they yeah. were not stage parents. You were the driving force for you. I was. Um, but you talk about the cycle of substance abuse that you fell into at the height of fame. Take a look. The drinking helped dull down my emotions. And whether it was alcohol or weed, I stayed in an intoxicated state as much as possible, even during the day, which made me care less about everything. But I continued the cycle, drinking to escape reality and then making decisions that were ultimately embarrassing at best or had horrible consequences at worst. Yeah, listen, I mean, that was not at the height of fame. That was in a down moment where I was like, had no, I felt completely like a victim of the circumstances of industry politics, things that were going on behind the scenes that I had no control of. So I would say dulling my emotions and coping in ways that I had seen family do for a long time. Right. It's, it's amazing how you come up with ways to cope and yeah. in retrospect, you can look back and be like, wow, I wish I had uh, dove in into piano lessons or something, but But no, the reality is that you can't have a triumph without a challenge. <laughs> and everyone has their... It's so true. You can't, you know. It's so and true. so fast forward, after this legal battle with the record company, you triumphantly return. You are writing your music. You are writing your story, which includes a Broadway debut. Oh, it's uh, so fun. It's so fun. Mulan Rouge. And so you got that. You have new music. Yes. So you I'm are so not worried. silenced in not any capacity. Yeah. I'm grateful for the journey. I'm grateful for all the yeah. weird stuff that I at the time wished wasn't happening. I wished my way out of it so much, but now I look back and I'm like a cool gritty person that has a lot of great stories yeah. to share. And yeah. I'm like, I wanna be, I, 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 I enjoy who I am and I'm down to be the eccentric aunt who wants to like share like <laughs> wait, stories with wait. the younger generation. I love it too because here's the deal. <laughs> I love it because the book, to your point, you have so many, you have lived a thousand lives yeah. and you share them all. One that is not in the book that the team told me before you go, because my producer is single and she said, you know, Jojo says she's on a dating app. She's been out with, <laughs> you've gone out, they said you've gone out with a neuroscientist. Oh yeah, that was weird. It was a neurosurgeon. No. <laughs> he had a beeper on him at dinner. He's like, he's like, somebody is getting operated on. I'm like, someone's brain is open and you're just like at, at dinner here? Anyway, it was just wild. So, you know, I don't know. Like, isn't that what people do these days? They put themselves out there. Yes. So I'm like, I'm over here having a moment. Let's <laughs> see. And this is such a powerful book, and I love the intention of it. You are sharing your ups and downs and your highs and even higher so that other people perhaps can take from it and learn from it. I love that. That's, That's a my great intention. It. And it's Thank a beautiful you. book. JoJo's Memoir, Over the Influence, is out next week. You can pre-order your copy, but Tam Fam, yes. you don't have to wait because you're all going home, not just with a copy, but JoJo has signed.